Welcome back. Let's discuss now another approach to writing called guided composition. In guided composition, the student writing is less controlled. Students are given some content and forms of sentences, but not all of what they will use. They may be supplied with the first sentence, the last sentence, an outline to fill out, or a set of guide questions with which to organize their writing. Since control is replaced by guidance, errors may begin to appear. Let's see if you can find these characteristics in the next classroom scene. Class, I have here with me two columns of information about Rizal and Bonifacio. I'm going to give out handouts to you. Does everyone have his or her own copy? Yes. Okay, now let's take a look at the handout. Under Rizal, we have the following phrases. Well off, educated, La Liga Filipina, political reforms, Pagumbayan, Luneta by the Spanish firing squad. Okay, and under Bonifacio, we have the following phrases. Poor, self-taught, Katipunan, armed revolution, Mount Buntis, Maragondon Cavite by Aguinaldo's men. Study them carefully, class. What do these facts show? Yes, Maya? Ma'am, they tell about the family status, education, and the organizations they founded. Very good. Very good, Maya. What else? Aaron? Uh, they tell what, what Rizal and Bonifacio stood for, when, and how they died. Right. Any other answer? Jeffrey? Um, they show contrasts between Rizal and Bonifacio. Very good. Now, class, below the facts is an incomplete paragraph. You are going to complete it by writing sentences that show contrasts between the two heroes. Use the given information and the clues in the paragraph. Did you understand that? Do you have any questions? No. Okay, you may start now. that called guided composition? Why is it less controlled? As shown in the activity, the students were given some, but not all, of the content and form of the sentences they would use to complete the paragraph. They were given the first sentence, a number of starters, and information to include in their writing. However, much more had to be shaped by the students themselves than what they did in controlled composition. In what way is the activity less controlled? What language forms are being reinforced? Both controlled and guided composition writing focus on accuracy rather than fluency. They are useful for teaching beginners who need a lot of guidance. These approaches match the view that considers writing as a product. Free composition writing, on the other hand, frees the learners from controls. This type of writing enables them to pay attention to what they want to say rather than how they are to say it. Aside from the process approach to writing, which will be lengthily presented in the succeeding episodes, what other approaches are compatible with writing as a process? One of these is the free writing approach, sometimes called quick writing. Let me show you a classroom scene on free writing. Class, 
just like what we did yesterday, we're going to have another 5 to 10 minute exercise. Okay? But this time around, I'm not going to give you any topic. You are free to write about any topic which interests you. However, if you cannot think of any topic to write about just now, you can put down on paper whatever comes to your mind. For instance, you can write about something like this. I cannot think of anything to write about just now because I'm sleepy or because I've just eaten lunch or whatever. Do you get my point? Yes, okay, so just do not stop writing whatever comes to your mind, okay? Eventually, you will be able to focus on writing about one topic, just one topic. Do not worry about your grammar. Do not worry about your spelling. Just write down whatever comes to your mind. We'll work on those uh, corrections later on, okay? Now, write down the ideas that come to your mind as fast as you can. Keep on writing for 10 minutes and then I'll give you the signal to stop. Okay, have fun writing class. You may begin now. What is the teacher's purpose for allowing the students to write on any topic? Why didn't the students have to worry about grammar and writing conventions as they wrote? Free writing is meant to make the students get rid of writing block. That is, not having anything to write down on paper because they lack ideas or they fear that their English is bad. Free writing, which helps students concentrate on content or ideas rather than on form, encourages them to get as many ideas down on paper as possible. Hopefully, when students get used to writing down ideas, they won't fear writing at all. So far, we have taken up three approaches to writing. The last in our list is the communicative approach. Here, the students must consider these questions. Why am I writing this? Who will read it? You see, the communicative approach approximates what writers write in real life. That is, writing for a definite purpose and a definite audience. To achieve this, the teacher has to contextualize the writing activity so that students can make choices in what to say, how to say it, and whom to say it to. I'm sure you've learned a lot about writing in this episode. And don't worry if you missed something. We will take another break, and when we return, we shall make a recap. We have presented in this episode the similarities and differences between writing and speaking, the views about writing, and some approaches that are compatible with the views on writing. We said that writing can be a product, a process, or an act of communicating. We took some approaches to writing and these are controlled composition, guided composition, the free writing approach, and the communicative approach. In the next episode, we shall give you the process approach to writing. So, goodbye for now. This is Menchi Pascual saying, Happy Teaching!